Welcome back everyone and it's time to go pause D. Today we are covering Yami's fight with Dante and explaining how much stronger he has become in Black Clover's timescape with his training. We will go over every single ability and magic he has gained in the timescape and my personal opinion of how he squares up against the other captains. For example, I did a poll recently on Twitter and a lot of you believe what Yami showcased whilst facing Dante of the Dark Triad actually puts him at Wizard King level of power and he could be the strongest captain of all. Do you guys agree? Make sure to let everyone know where you would put Yami out of the captains in the comment section below. So to begin today's video, I'm going to be breaking down every new ability Yami has. The biggest difference you need to know between old Yami and time skip Yami is Mana Zone. Yami learned Mana Zone that enhances all of his previous powers and gives him access to even more mana. He learned this ability during his training with Midi Leona. And yes, I probably butchered her name and I'm going to say Siskolian's name quite often in this video. You're going to have to forgive me for that but I, can't, I still can't pronounce the name so one thing i want to point out the most that you need to keep in mind is that yami has supreme intelligence and skill at learning things related to magic really fast on top of that the difference between yami and the other captains is the fact that he is arcane this alone gives him an advantage over devil like enemies compared to others as his magic has speciality over these opponents and has unique attributes others cannot possess for example sis Gold Leon has fire magic but that doesn't stop others from having fire magic attribute as well i mean if we look it up and the literal definition of the word arcane that tabata uses it means mysterious and known only by a few people therefore yami has dark magic but this is unique to him as the heart queen said that the clover kingdom developed irregulars due to the kingdom's nature advancing to a different state than nature the heart queen goes on to say in chapter 228 that garja as a stage zero cannot finish off a devil but an arcane mage can now yami pulls up and destroys dante at 80 percent so that pretty much lets you know that yami could be a stage zero arcane mage so using basic logic yami is someone that is on the level of becoming wizard king since julius gave his compliments to someone like garja and said he's powerful based upon their past fight however we know for a fact that yami could take on dante whilst garja can't in fact yami is stronger than 99 percent of the characters in the show anyway getting back to the point much like asta who learned key in the midst of a battle yami also has presented many times that he can surpass his limits when the time calls for it and whilst he was fighting arguably the strongest mage in the clover kingdom at the moment he adapted his fighting style instantly and managed to learn mana zone something he was struggling with previously having mana zone alone puts yami above some of the other captains already as most of them have not showcased this ability Mana Zone is one of the keys to unlocking your potential and getting to the next level. This is because Mana Zone in chapter 138 was described to be an advanced mana control technique that allows the user to manipulate the mana in the surrounding area. This results in the mage being able to gather together and utilize more magic than they would be able to normally. Yami in the anime went to Siskolion because she is without a doubt the strongest captain of them all. Although it was temporary and she gave Gave the world back to her brother she showcased to us in chapter 137 that with mana zone the mana can be funneled into spells to increase their size number and range it can also be used to launch attacks in any direction and from any direction within the zone spells can be created all around a target to keep them from escaping and within an enemy spell to destroy it as we saw in chapter 121 it can also be used to go behind a target to catch them by surprise like you know did in chapter chapter 138. Now one way Yami orchestrated Mana Zone for his benefit is by creating a new technique called Dark Cloak Ayo Slash. He instantly defeats Dante at 60% devil power if it wasn't for his regeneration powers. This power is so busted that Yami says it's a technique that will never miss. It will guarantee to hit its target. Now a fun fact to throw in for you because <laughs> we have to go both deep right? Ayado is a Japanese style of swordsmanship that emphasizes awareness 
awareness of one's surroundings and drawing one's sword swiftly and smoothly in response to a sudden attack. That is why Yami's spell works in that manner since Tabata is inspired from it. Yami is using a style of fighting that is from his home country that isn't within this continent. The Heart Queen mentioned how the use of a key technique is from the land of the sun and she's aware of it somehow. It's something people of this continent that they are currently on do not practice. Further foreshadowing the fact that there is another continent that we do not know of or have explored, therefore the next few arcs may be going there. Now going back to Mana Zone, defensively the Mana can be used to sharpen Mana detection and heighten reaction time. We saw this in chapter 138 and Yami showcases this defensive power against Dante throughout their fight. He is using Key and Mana Zone to avoid being hit and increase his reaction time as he stated himself. We saw this when he quickly moved out of the way of Dante's Earth Gravity Sword. He moved too quickly for it to not be magic and it couldn't have been any of his spells as dark magic is just too slow to have that kind of reaction speed. Although Yami argues that he is still not yet on the level of Julius Novocrona, the former Wizard King, implying again to the readers that Julius, he was on his own level, he was so busted in his prime that he could have dealt with Dante without a problem at all, especially since Julius is also arcane and could reverse his healing with time. Dante would instantly die if Yami or Asta hit him and Julius prevents him from healing for example. So if you want to understand the true power of Julius in his prime, I suggest for you to watch the video being displayed to you right now and I'll put it in the pinned comment because I cover everything in detail on Julius's most amazing feats of just how powerful he really was and why he lost to Pat 3 on purpose. Also by the way I'd appreciate if you could also smash that like button right now and hit the notification bell to join our community. We cover Black Clover on a weekly basis and we all need to be on the same page to enjoy the series much more and I'd appreciate your support. <laughs> So getting back to the point, because Yami has got the hang of Mana's zone, he's able to access the more advanced level of this power. Yami already knew Mana skin and reinforcement magic that is linked to it. Reinforcement magic basically means to increase their physical abilities like strength and speed told to us in chapter 50. Whilst Mana skin is a basic coating of Mana that lets you withstand harsh environments with strong and wild concentrations of Mana like the Grand Magic Zone and Dungeons. However, a good reminder for us to keep in mind is that Tabata, the creator of Black Clover, has said Yami is the strongest person in the Clover Kingdom in terms of physical strength. No one matches him and this plays a key part in explaining why and how he can withstand such heavy attacks or dish them out himself. A big difference I would like to point out as an example is when Dante uses his 60% gravity power on Yami to pull him down to his level from the air when they first meet and he was flying. Yami was carrying Finro at the same time but never lost his footing at all and landed on his feet. Resisting the gravity magic with his muscles and own mana in play, he could control himself enough to not land on the floor face first and Dante was impressed with this. If you compare this to another captain like Jack, he instantly fell down to the ground against 60% Dante and he couldn't move for a while. Noct even questions whether or not Jack will be able to attack with the force in front of him. This is until Jack broke his limits by having a flashback in chapter 278 and then he attacks Dante who has now activated 80%. So as you can see, these small details like this are very important at showcasing Yami's superior strength compared to the other captains. Something as simple as that made Jack break his limits, whilst for Yami, he would need something even more detrimental since he has done it so many times, right? So true. <laughs> now let's address why Yami can fly now. Well, if you can remember in chapter 110, Sis Goleon already showed that she can technically fly when she was teaching everyone about Mana and we get an explanation in chapter 138 when she fought Raya. Mana zone is a skill that allows a mage to manipulate the mana in an area around themselves and control that territory, much like how Yami negated all of Dante's gravity magic in the area for him to move freely. Yami learned how to stand on mana while facing Sis Goleon in the anime in the training arc. She decides to go full power towards the end, in which Yami says forget it because he learned what he needed to do. However, Sis Goleon was putting 
putting on a good show as she was using some of her most overpowered spells in her arsenal. She even declares before they begin that she's going to be serious and not joke around, so we cannot take this lightly. We see that Yami is capable of holding his wits with her even without mana zone, and he uses dark magic to actually absorb her spells. But let's be honest, there is no doubt that Cisco Leon is the strongest of all and was overpowering Yami as he admits he can't beat her himself, but she isn't a captain anymore. In the time skip, Yami is still easily in the top two strongest, and I'll explain why in more detail towards the end of the video, so please stick around. Let's explain more of his powers. Essentially, the point that I'm trying to make, even against Cisco Leon, who is the most powerful mage in the Clover Kingdom, Yami can use his spell called Black Hole or Black Moon to absorb magic multiple times. This spell allows Yami to take control of the surrounding mana and then create a black hole overhead, expanding the range of its absorption over a defined area. Yami is able to discriminate what gets absorbed by the spell, such as erasing an opponent's spell while leaving an ally spell unaffected, which is absolutely amazing in teamwork fights. So if we look at the fight during his training with the other captains, he performed this task even against any of their magic. I mean, this dude is so busted that no one can really do anything against his most powerful spell called Dark Cloak Dimension slash Equinix. Equinox. I don't even know how to pronounce that shit. That's how powerful it is. Equinix? Nope. Equinox? Nope. Equinix? Nope. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Yami is definitely stronger than Dorothy as well because after using this spell called Equinix, nope. he pretty much dispelled her whole dimension of dreams and ended the fight in reality. Dorothy's magic cannot affect Yami because he counters it by destroying the reality of dreams and funnily enough, he knows his drawbacks as he immediately dreams of an exit and he counters the copies of him as he states himself, the copies can never be better than the original. I'm pretty sure, just like how he almost one-shotted a high-ranked devil like Zagred according to Lucifer when Dante asks, you know before the time skip he used this equinic nope. spell, so when we see the demon god that Sisgolion is facing, we can pretty much tell it has no mobility and is a big target. So if Yami charged it up again and used this equinic nope. spell at full power against it, I think it would instantly die just how Sisgolion did successfully with her fire power. I'm being honest bro, let me know what you think in the comment section if you think that's true as well. Anyways, this showcases to us that Yami has figured out that he can use his dark hole spell to absorb everyone else's spell if it requires it. The black moon spell, which is a mixture of mana zone and his black hole spell, allows him to essentially get rid of any magic within a small vicinity surrounding him. We saw him display this ability when he was being weighed down by Dante's intense gravity only to overcome it with ease and he was able to move freely within his spell's range. In fact, Tabata is kind of smart because Yami countering Dante is quite natural. The power scaling system in magic was explained by Nozelle in chapter 199. Patri, as a dark elf, is pretty powerful that was taking on Yuno and Asta with ease. Asta even exclaimed that it was magic that even Captain Yami would struggle with. However, Nozelle showed up explaining that the attributes of magic affects a matchup due to the nature of his magic being able to counter Patri. This is how Nozelle defeated Patri in one chapter. Now, with this explanation, dark magic has the ability to absorb spells. This was even explained to us in chapter 49. This magic is effective against a devil and couldn't be manipulated by Zagrid and scientifically speaking, a black hole is a place in space where gravity pulls so much so that even light cannot get out. The gravity is so strong because matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. A black hole is defined by the escape velocity that would have to be attained to escape from the gravitational pull exerted upon an object. For example, the escape velocity of Earth is equal to 11 kilometers per second. Anything that wants to escape Earth's gravitational pull must go at least 11 kilometers per second. No matter what the thing is, a rocket ship or a baseball, it has to go that fast. So a black hole is an object so compact that within a certain distance of it, even the speed of light is not fast enough to escape. Yami completely counters Dante because he uses dark magic and black holes destroys the gravity within the area, thus allowing him to move freely 
freely just as he displayed in chapter 245. He could even do this against Varnacle or Zenon with ease. I mean, we have to give this man some credit. Even when Dante was at 80% Devil Lucifer power and being serious with two types of magic, whilst Yami only has one, it's pretty unfair. But the man does a good job at keeping up. Let's not forget that even at 80% Dante in chapter 257, Yami still technically killed Dante with his attack called Defrost. Yami landed this fatal attack at least four to five times on Dante if it wasn't for his regeneration magic. Dante acknowledges Yami for his fighting sense and skills and says he's ahead of him in both aspects and that he's jealous of him. So that just highlights once again that Yami is stronger than most of the other captains as before Hell's Gate was open, he would have dealt with Dante just fine. Defrost is an ability whilst Black Moon is active, his mono zone. Yami holds up his sword, draws it back and super condenses the spell's effect into a small area around their arm. The user then thrusts their sword towards the target and the thrust creates a focus blast. Yami said he made a mistake whilst casting this spell for the first time but when he mastered this magic it would be completely more busted. Now on top of all of that Yami is selfless and isn't stupid at all because instead of wasting energy on Dante he knows the only way for him to win is to receive Asta's help and even when Asta joined the fight and in the midst of their battle he was a slight liability Asta was right until their emotions and breathing was synced to finally complete the fight for victory. Now realistically Yami is selfless just like William because he tries to save Asta whilst fighting Dante and some people would argue that William is just as strong as Yami as he is part of the Golden Dawn and still retains some of the elf mana as he stated the Golden Dawn should use this gift for good. The reason William lost to Zenon was because he was trying to save the Golden Dawn members at the same time. However, I could argue that Yami would be able to defeat any of the Dark Triad if it weren't for Dante having his regeneration ability of body magic. Dante Dante said he was jealous of Yami and he cannot match his swordsmanship skills. Yami would have been able to deal with Zanon at 55% much quicker and then he could go help the other Golden Dawn members who are shit. Now using basic logic, let's be honest, if Zenon was dead by Yami as he would use Defrost on him, the devil power with the other Dark Disciples would disappear as the host that is Zenon would not have life and be dead and the devil would be no more. So you're asking right now, wait, is Yami stronger than William? Well fam, bro, think about it. Isn't destroying the enemy quicker and one-shotting them a better solution than distracting yourself by using healing magic on others? Yami would be able to one-shot Zenon due to being arcane and using the IR slash that could detect Dante and nullify his gravity magic at 80%. But like, think about this shit. Therefore, Yami could have done the same to Zenon by negating his magic with the Dark Cold, Black Moon, and Monazon spells. And Yami's Black Moon can destroy Zenon's spatial domination. If you know, think about this shit, bruh. If you know a vice captain blessed with the Wind Spirit can take on Zenon and one shot him at 55% in chapter 280, bruh, Yami can definitely do this within a few seconds. And then the Dark Disciples would have lost their death devil power and all the golden dawn would have been saved bruh i'm simping over yami i need to <laughs> control myself he's too happy but what i'm trying to say is william is weaker than yami as a captain at the moment however william has more versatility in his magic as he can perform many different things with it defense offense healing whilst yami is mostly offensive spells xenon according to the plot is at 55 percent devil power whilst yami was destroying dante at 80 percent and don't even get me started on that shitty little vanaka woman right she got her heart pierced by noel yami is arcane unlike noel and he would destroy vanaka without even trying i believe yami was a challenge to every single dark trine member before hell's gate was open to give them 100 of the devil power the only captains that will pose a challenge to him at the moment would be fugelion or nazel charlotte at the minute is struggling with vanaka and in the captain's fight within the anime it's pretty obvious she isn't on par with him and let's be honest she just wants that d you know what i'm saying she just want to marry the dude. They are getting married in the future and I've done a video explaining every sign why Yami is in love with Charlotte but he's not admitting it. I'll put that in the pinned comment too. But basically for Gwelion, he's definitely going to be overpowered due to the time skip as he has the Salamander Spirit. And with the Spirit, he could learn the spell that Yuno did which is called Spirit Dive. He will also have Mana Zone and training from his sister on gaining new fire spells. Whilst Nozel has royal level of Mana and is for Gwelion's rival. So I'm guessing to buy 
Tobata will use some sort of plot device to keep them balanced. Tobata did say in an interview that both of them are candidates to be the next Wizard King, so he will make sure that they are both strong in the power scaling. And uh, you know, I don't need to mention real Dorothy and all the others because I already did a little tidbit of information about them lot. But that's everything what I think about Yami. I just explained all his powers. How strong is he right now? I think he's pretty busted. My man would have taken on the demon god low key. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for joining me as always. Join the Discord, the Twitter, Instagram, Twitch streams and hit the notification bell. See you guys next time.